Alright, just under 8 minutes until Sentry upgrades level 16. So, while we're waiting, let's take a look at some of the hacks that I did. So, I attacked Neo, like I said I was going to, and uh, I actually came in with one Wraith. Um, so, granted, he is upgrading his uh, scanner, but I only used one Wraith, so I think it's fair. Technically, and um, I started off with the Wraith because this Colgate is uh, decently high leveled and uh, I was kind of worried that I would run out of time since a Colgate of that level usually takes me double blasters to get through and I didn't want to end up running out of blaster and uh, just not having enough time to do everything. So I thought starting with the Wraith was a safe bet, only costed me 7 program slots so I didn't end up losing that many beam cannons over it so it was fine. So here, I actually didn't notice that his high level sentry hasn't spread over yet, so I was actually a bit slow, because um, if I knew then I could have probably gotten the scanner and the sentry at the same time, but uh, instead I thought that um, the scanner would drop way faster than it actually did, and I uh, missed my chance to get a head start, but I think that was fine. Um, and here after I put the protector on the sentry, I just went ahead with beam cannon and Ice Wall as usual. I think the uh, Sentry was actually the beneficial choice for the Protector because it has 4 slots compared to uh, the 3 slots on the Scanner. Um, so here I saw that it was connected to the Colgate, so I just went ahead and put on 2 Blasters because I was going to need it anyways. And it turns out that it actually helps a lot with the Core, so because um, the Blaster has just a bit under half of the DPS of my Beam Cannon right now, so it lets me actually take down the core much faster, even using only two slots. And I know Neo was uh, bugging me about how the blaster and protector takes up a lot of my time, but when I can put on two in situations like this, I think overall the time uh, I'm not doing too mad on time. Because you see here that I actually have a mid remaining, and um, I just decided to just let the blaster do its thing. I didn't bother taking off the protector, because it wasn't perfectly timed, so I did, wanted to be sure that the scanner didn't drop. And uh, since I wasn't that, uh, I had enough time, so I didn't want to risk just removing the protector. So I, I just played it safe. And then once I got here, I just put on the uh, protector on both nodes for good measure, and uh, went for full control. So. Apparently I didn't actually use all 5 protectors, which was kind of interesting, but I was only being half sarcastic when I said that I should use all 5 protectors anyways. So overall, I think it is an improvement over last time, but I think having the uh, protector on the sentry at the start there and having the antivirus slightly delayed might have made a pretty big difference. Because um, you see here that the Colgate is connected to the scanner as well as the sentry. So the sentry is connected to all of the lower level nodes. So having three uh, beam cannon, or well, two beam cannon and one blaster slot lets me take down these three nodes really quickly. And then the scanner also lets me take down these three nodes really quickly. Whereas if instead the sentry was connected to the scanner instead, then that might have actually not let me take everything down as quickly, but then again there's an attack priority problem, because um, the security nodes always take priority over the nodes like the scanner. And then, since I was able to put on 4 slots here, uh, I actually think I got by without using the protector on the scanner, because otherwise I would have had to. But um, since I was able to go from here, take out the, uh, this turret, and then take out the black ice and actually uh, reduce the amount of da damage I would have had to need to worry about on the scanner. Um, here, I solved the issue of not having to use the shocker because double blaster. It does the amount of same amount of DPS as if I had put on four beam cannons, but I had a protector instead of having to use like ten shockers here or something. Finally, wraithing the Koke definitely helped because I had 22 seconds left, if I didn't wraith it might have been a bit over time, since uh, I would need two blasters against this Colgate. So overall, I think the base is an improvement, and uh, I think the level 6 blaster is also a pretty good improvement. 
Now, Neo's promise that um, after I hack him, he's gonna demonstrate the power of the shocker, and he has a level six shocker. So, here's what's gonna happen. This sentry is gonna upgrade in one minute, and then afterwards, I'm going to focus on upgrading my compiler instead, because um, my compile time is starting to get to 20 minutes in some instances now, so it would be nice to reduce it back down. And in order to do so, I need to upgrade my storages. So I'll have most of my security notes up for the next day. And if Neo shows that the shocker is really powerful, then I'm going to go ahead and upgrade all of my library to level eight, and I'm gonna get three shockers. And if not, then I'm just gonna go straight to level 10 core. And here you go, level 16 sentry. Um, should I call this gold or just gold border? Cause I know the uh, level 19 one is even more gold, gold whitish. So I'm not sure if I should call this one gold or if the level 19 one is gold code. I'm not sure what people use for that. So let's uh, go ahead and upgrade my storages. I need 100k B coins to upgrade the compiler. So I'm gonna have to put both up to level 13 at the same time. And uh, I'll just allocate two for, e uh, two for one of them and three for the other one. And this should still let me finish both of them by tomorrow. Um, protector's not gonna finish upgrading until after I go sleep. So that's a bit unfortunate, but uh, four hours. So I will only be losing about five hours of upgrade time, which is okay. Um, and also, if Neil manages to demonstrate the power of the Shocker, I will upgrade my Shocker as well. So there's a lot at stake here. Show me how deep the rabbit hole goes, I guess. But we're not gonna end the episode here. I also want to show a few interesting decisions that people have been apparently making, which uh, I'm not really convinced are good ones. And what I'm talking about is the wall, the story mission build. Um, Cause the split defense here, where one side goes towards the, uh, well, one set of storage, and then the other side goes towards another set of storage, but they're completely split, as opposed to um, protecting all of them at the same time. Uh, I mean, I guess if you're playing StarCraft 2 right now, this could be a good multitasking challenge. But in terms of pure defense, I, I have doubts about this. Because um, the thing here is that it sounds good in theory, I guess. But what ends up happening is that you just have two mediocre defense, as opposed to one really good defense. And you see here that in one minute, I broke through the all of his defense, as opposed to um, having like taken down only part of it. Because against the harder networks where they have the code gate in front um, and defenses and it just all goes through, it takes me a minute to get through the defenses, or the code gates rather, and then another minute to get through the defenses, even if it's a crappy network. But here I was able to get through both code gates and the defenses in one minute. And you can see here why it sounds good in theory, but in reality, it's just not a very good decision. Because there are plenty of builds around that lets you protect both all of your storages and the farm that doesn't involve splitting your defenses. It may look like you're protecting both, but in reality, you would do much better to just put them all in one place. It's like the saying, uh, if you're a jack of all trades, you're a master of none. And uh, being a master of none is not a very good choice because then you're just going to end up losing all of your resources. So, I don't know, hopefully I'm not being too harsh, but the takeaway here is you're, you're not a PvE mission. Um, I mean, it looks cool when you're playing a mission and uh, they split their defenses like this, but you're not a PvE mission, so don't do that. Don't don't try to design your base for aesthetic purposes. And um, I know I, I, I am doing that a lot right now because um, I get really annoyed when the base is really messy. Uh, 
both for myself and against other players. But I think it's better to just sacrifice a bit of aesthetic and uh, try to use that against their opponent, right? Because I don't know if I'm the only person annoyed by that, but if I am, then maybe other people will be too. And it might actually be a benefit, more of a pro rather than a con. And um, here, very similar idea, except it's not as dramatic. But you can see how by set, uh, splitting the black ice away from the turret, here all I have to take down is the turret, and on the other side all I have to worry about is the black ice, but not having to actually worry about them in combination with each other, which is um, where it's even more threatening. Um, and also I didn't mess up a bit here, but it wasn't really that big of a deal because of the split defense. If um, the defense was more concentrated, that mess up might have cost me a lot more, but here it was just a minor delay. Um, and his story was separating too, so that was like cherry on top of the icing, or whatever you want, I really call it. And um, in this one, I wasn't even really multitasking nearly as hard as the last one, and I still had a minute to spare. Also, another thing that I like to do when I have all of my security notes up is to just keep a lot of resources in my storages because um, it makes me look like a good target to attack. They can hack a lot from me if they succeed. Uh, so in a way, I'm tricking them into testing my defenses for me, but I hope that's, uh, I hope that's not unethical. So I guess let's just end off with uh, an attack and Acid Burn, plus 10 reputation. That's actually pretty good. Most people give me only plus 3. So his network doesn't seem that scary either. Um, Decently low, well, the Kogai is high leveled and somewhat decent focus fire on these two nodes. But that's kind of weird that they have these connected like this. We're, um, hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to uh, protect her here. And then once I break through, I can just take over everything. It, it was a, It's a kind of a strange choice, the way he connected it, just like directly together. But um, I don't think it will be too much of a problem in reality, because it will target the security node first, and uh, I just need to get in the same way. And in fact, I think it's actually a bit of a weakness, um, simply because by having it like that, uh, the scanner can only take two slots as opposed to the normal three. So the protector will definitely hold on the scanner, which is actually a huge plus here, because then I can all pretty much guarantee I'll get onto one of the security node, which is apparently connected to every other security node. So from there, I can set up a foothold with only ice walls because of the four slots. Also, take note of the um, stun lock timing on the blaster in case you're interested. So, here it goes. Um, it's going to target the turret first. Definitely noticeably higher damage. Set up the foothold. Uh, might have to refresh the ice wall. And then set up here. And another refresh, and I should be good. Pretty much right now. Uh, oops, I meant to select the Guardian, but it instead didn't select. So wasted two beam cannons there, which is fine. Um, I'm not sure how strong this actually is. This is pretty uncommon. Level 1 compiler. Uh, I guess I won't need those as well. Um, I'm just going to put a protector here because I'm kind of lazy. Because um, there is a core here and it's connected to four nodes. So I think it might actually be a bit more economical for me to go with the protector as opposed to uh, ice wall because it might cost me three or four ice walls to do that. So, well, maybe economical is not the right word. Um, I think I think technically it's going to cost me more to put on the protector anyways. But I don't have to refresh as many ice wall or as many beam cannons, so yeah. So not bad. If only I can get more of these type of hacks because it's pretty hard to climb. When uh, every time I put on my security note, I get hacked for minus 20. Not good times. And just to be absolutely clear, since I do have some new subscriber, uh, thank you by the way, 
I am focusing primarily on the sentry and the core right now. And that's because my thoughts right now is that the sentry is going to be the most powerful security node because it applies to every single node I have. Uh, especially these ones where they can be a choke point by themselves just because they have an antivirus on them. And like these nodes. Whereas uh, the security nodes here only work on uh, against a single choke point. So that's why I want to focus on the sentry. And then after uh, the sentry is the core. And that's because the core unlocks more nodes. And I also believe that having more nodes is always going to be better than having less nodes, no matter how you look at it. So that's why my plan right now is primarily to uh, focus on the sentry and the core. And of course, I'll upgrade my programs whenever I need to. Uh, that's why I'm upgrading my Bitcoin mine right now, because I feel like I need to upgrade the compiler again because 18 minutes now um a while ago it was 10 minutes and i like that better all right so that's it for this episode thank you guys for watching uh if you liked it then please remember to leave a like and subscribe and uh i'll see you next time thank you